To say that Lamar Jackson has taken a step forward in 2019 is the understatement of all understatements. He's not just a better player in year two, he's damn near an entirely new player altogether. Everything, and I mean everything, that I harped on over and over again last season, all of which were small details that I believed were holding him back at the time, have been significantly improved. His footwork and weight transfer are way cleaner and more consistent, his eye discipline is better, his ability to recognize coverages both pre-snap and post-snap is improved, and even his accuracy on the run, which was a big problem for him last season, has gotten better. As far as year one to year two jumps go, this is one of the most jarring contrasts that I've seen in the last five years for any player, and he deserves all the credit in the world for that. I pride myself on calling it like I see it and being honest on this show, and I'll be the first to admit that I was rough on Lamar last year. And for good reason, because even the most diehard Ravens fans will admit that he had his share of problems. But part of honesty as an analyst, beyond just giving critiques, is also being honest enough to give praise when it's warranted. And to me, Lamar's now kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, in that, in my opinion, he's not getting enough praise for how far he's come. You can look at box scores and opponents and write off the stats saying, okay, yeah, he lit up Miami, he played well against Arizona, but he had a low completion percentage against KC and lost the game. And you might say, okay, he's better than he was, but he's still not any good. But to me, that's just a lazy conclusion by lazy people. Watching the tape, Jackson is so much better than even his stats indicate, and his stats are, truth be told, pretty damn good so far this season. When you look at some of the throws that Jackson is making now, he wasn't even attempting them as a rookie, let alone nailing them perfectly in high pressure situations with consistency. There was one seam ball that he threw against the Cardinals a couple weeks back on third and long that I swear it's the best throw that I've ever seen him make as a pro. And it's probably one of the nastiest throws that I'll see any quarterback make all season that isn't named Pat Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers. I mean, just check this out here. It's third and 17 from the Baltimore 18 yard line, and the Ravens are in an empty set with no backs in the backfield. They're basically just screaming, hey, we're gonna go deep, see if you can stop us. And the Cardinals responded with a two deep zone coverage to try to do just that and keep everything in front of them. And by the way, you can tell it's zone and not man just based on the really deep inside leverages of the hook zone defenders against both of these receivers in the slots. And ironically, the Cardinals being in a two deep zone is a good pre-snap read for Lamar because the Ravens have dialed up what's called a divide concept here to try to split those two deep zones with Mark Andrews. Divide is a cover two killer that most teams have been using for many, many years. So this is a great call. But just because it is awesome against cover two doesn't mean that it's not still a really hard throw because Jackson's read on this Mike linebacker as he's dropping into the zone can either turn this into a big gain or a crippling interception very easily. The key here for Lamar is to read this linebacker's angle and his hips as he's dropping to see if he's either A, carrying the route aggressively or B, dropping straight back to a spot. If the backer opens his hips up towards Andrews, turns his back away from Jackson, and tries to carry Andrews up the seam by sliding into his hip pocket, Lamar's got him. He can drop that ball in right behind the linebacker's shoulder to the inside as Andrews bends his route between the safeties. And if it's placed correctly, it should be a big gain. However, if the Mike linebacker is not sliding over to carry that route with tight match coverage, and instead if he's dropping straight backwards with eyes on the ball, Lamar cannot throw it to Andrews because that would be begging for an interception, and he'll have to move off to his next read. It's a split second decision to make here, either good or bad, and Lamar has to get the ball out fast and on time to hit a very small window. Honestly, in 2018, I don't think he would have been able to consistently execute this kind of play against this kind of coverage because he just wasn't ready yet. But now in 2019, just watch how effortless he makes it look. On the end zone angle, you can see just how tight a window this really was. The mic was opening his hips to carry the route, Lamar saw it as he was in his drop, and he immediately knew where to place this pass to punish this kind of match coverage. Just look at how many defenders this ball had to wedge itself in between just to move the chains here. One outstretched hand over the middle that almost got a piece, another hand from the mic that it narrowly zipped by, and then the ball just kind of sank like an old Barry Zito curve at the last possible second to drop in underneath those safeties. I mean, this throw is perfect in every single way. The read and decision were quick, the footwork was great, his hip torque was textbook, his touch to layer this ball over the linebackers and under the safeties was immaculate. 
I mean, it's just beautiful to watch. And this throw right here is really what made me sit back and say for the first time, okay, this is real now. That switch has flipped and he is officially a different quarterback. There was another extremely clutch throw late in that same game that again showed perfect touch, timing, and anticipation, and it blew me away because last season the Ravens coaching staff probably would never have even called it in the first place because they couldn't trust it to work. Let's walk through it step by step because it really is worth seeing just how deadly Lamar's arm can be now. It's late in the fourth quarter, Baltimore's trying to ice the game on third and 11, and they're once again in an empty set while the Cardinals are showing man coverage with a single high safety. The Ravens are running a concept called slot fades to try to salt this game away, which is great against man coverage because slot receivers running fades from such a reduced split gives them a huge advantage deep down the field when they've got all of that space to work with between the cornerback and the boundary. The more room they have, the easier it is for them to hold that DB inside on the route and then drift off outside underneath the ball at the last possible second to create separation. And when you also factor in that Marquise Brown runs a legit low 4-3-40 and can track a deep ball just as well as his cousin Antonio, you have yourself a recipe for a huge play before the ball is even snapped. Lamar knows where he's going with the play from the jump. It's the easiest decision he made all day. But I just want to show you the arc that he puts on this thing to drop it right over Brown's shoulder on the boundary, again, in the only spot where the DB could not reach it despite being in really tight trail technique all the way through the route. It's one thing to throw a deep ball with velocity, but trajectory and timing are just as important. You've got to be able to drop that ball in a tiny little breadbasket of a target 40 yards down the field, because if you cannot throw it at that trajectory and accurately to get around the reach of a defender, you've basically got no shot of ever completing this kind of pass. This was just a pure ice cold throw by Jackson, and it could not have been placed any better. To me, it's a perfect example of how he's really learned to put air under the ball to get the right trajectory when he's given those crucial one-on-one -on -one opportunities outside. That being said though, on some throws you do not want to put air under the ball and you do not want it hanging up there for that long because it's just begging to be picked off by a safety. And in those instances, that's where arm strength really becomes important because your only option is to just drive the ball as hard as you can to a really tight spot while also maintaining accuracy. On those kinds of throws, that's where I think Lamar displays his pure arm talent the most. We've seen him layer it in between defenders over the middle so far, we've seen him drop it in the bucket over the shoulder outside, but to see him really show off his arm by throwing missiles into small windows 30 or 40 yards down the field, that's what gets me excited the most. There was one last week against the Chiefs, which ended up not even being complete because Brown couldn't get his feet down in bounds, but good lord was it a pretty throw off a really great read. The Ravens were running a seam wheel concept out of essentially a bunch close right, except in this case it was off Z motion because they wanted to give Lamar a little pre-snap indicator on if the coverage was man or zone. Tyron Matthew did not follow him across the formation by the way, so it was pretty clearly zone based on that pre-snap look. But here's the thing, just because it's zone doesn't mean that you know exactly how the zones are going to be played. Every team plays zones a little bit differently in terms of responsibilities and techniques and depths and keys and all that, so sometimes, even when your team has a seam route against cover 3 zone, which should be open, it's not because of how that defense executes their cover 3 assignments. And as a quarterback, you've got to recognize that and adjust your throws accordingly. And that's what Lamar did here, and he did it pretty damn quick. Pay attention to number 21 playing his deep third zone, that's Prashad Breeland. His positioning here in that zone is called splitting, and some teams do this to take away route combinations that either exploit the seams, or routes that try to flood him deep and clear him out of the way for a big play to someone else underneath. He is splitting himself in between the number one and the number two receivers to this side of the field, not overly committing to either one yet, because he knows that if he stays too far to the inside to take away that seam ball, the boundary can be easily exploited with an uncontested go route. But if he overplays that boundary threat, his free safety could be left out to dry in that seam and give up a big play inside instead. So he's splitting the routes to give himself the best possible chance to make a play on the ball if it's thrown deep, no matter where it's thrown, and that creates a very peculiar challenge for Lamar Jackson. 
As he throws this ball, he needs to drop it over the top of the cornerback's recovery angle to make sure he can't adjust to it and undercut it for a pick. But as he's putting it over the top, the ball cannot hang too long in the air either, or the free safety will have time to get there and intercept it himself. There is a very small effective window to operate with here, and with this throw being 30 yards down the field, basically all the way from the opposite hash, it's about as difficult and as dangerous as it gets. But difficulty or not, I mean, look at where Lamar puts this thing. Talk about having a howitzer strapped to your shoulder, this could not have possibly been thrown any better with more perfect timing or more perfect placement. It's high and outside so that the corner has no shot to undercut it and make a play. It gets there with velocity so that the free safety can't even get close. All that's missing is for Marquise Brown to just barely tap his feet in bounds so that this can officially be the throw of the week, but he just can't get them down inside the paint after he jumps up high to snag it. He's not a very big receiver, so I suppose that's to be expected, but man, this was a great throw. Completed pass or not, if my quarterback could do that and make that kind of read with that kind of arm talent from that kind of distance, I would be pretty damn excited. Lamar's got every tool in the toolbox now. He can make any kind of throw that you need him to make, which obviously means he's incredibly dangerous. But what's really scary is that he's still not even close to his ceiling and he's already that dangerous. Honestly, my only complaint with him at this point, and trust me, this is the most fixable of complaints, is that on many of his deep balls, he chooses the wrong way to throw the right pass. Again, we've just seen him throw the ball effectively on multiple different trajectories, very accurately, mind you, against a variety of different coverages. We know he can make whatever style of throw you need him to make, it's just the actual decision-making process of when to throw what style of ball that needs a little bit of work. He threw eight deep balls against the Chiefs last week of 20 or more yards, with a few more in between 15 and 20 yards, and on several of those intermediate to deep throws, I saw him make the right read and get the ball out with pretty good timing, but he just put the wrong trajectory on it and didn't give his receivers the best chance to go get it. My number one thing that I want to see Lamar improve on over the course of this season is just not rushing himself to throw missiles down the field when he sees Marquise Brown or Miles Boykin getting winnable one-on-ones outside. And instead, I just want him to stay calm, control that impulse, and put some air under the ball with enough arc to allow those talented receivers to catch up to it and finish the play. It's not about accuracy with him, that's not the problem. The ball is going to the right spot, it's just getting there too early because he's not letting it hang enough when he has room to let it hang. It looks like an overthrow, it looks like he's completely inaccurate and can't hit the broadside of a barn, but trust me, he just has to calm down when he sees a big play opportunity breaking open down the field. I look back to Carson Wentz throwing a pair of long touchdowns to Deshaun Jackson in week one, and I think those two throws are great teaching tape for a young quarterback like Lamar who has a similar weapon to Deshaun in Hollywood Brown. He needs to study how Carson throws Jackson open here. When he's starting his throwing motion, Deshaun still has about three yards to go before he even clears the coverage, but Wentz puts so much air under this ball and leaves it so far out in front of him that it gives Jackson time to track it all the way to the goal line, adjust to its angle, and bring it in for the score. This right here is what Lamar needs to do when he's got those one-on-ones with Hollywood and no safety in sight to punish a ball that hangs in the air. Throw it up, throw it deep, and give Brown that time to get there and pay it off. If he just makes that one little adjustment to his game and fixes one of the only real holes he's got left, besides I guess falling for trap coverages every now and then like a lot of other young quarterbacks do, then I mean truthfully, I don't know what the hell defenses would do to stop that offense. Statistically speaking, Lamar's deep ball has been terribly inconsistent this year, especially when compared to more efficient deep ball throwers like Mahomes and Wilson but despite that inconsistency, they're still dropping like 36 points a game anyway. If Jackson fixes that one thing, we could very easily be looking at an offense that rivals the Chiefs in terms of pure explosiveness. The fact that the Ravens are already playing this well, while Jackson still has a ton of room to grow, should absolutely scare the shit out of the rest of the league. We've already seen Lamar develop so much over the last year, and I'm done doubting his ability to grow even more over the next year. He's not perfect, obviously, in fact he's not even great yet, but the arrow is firmly pointing up for the rest of his career. 
For this entire past offseason, I didn't know what to make of the Ravens. I felt like they were in the middle of a mini reload and were very unlucky to be trapped in a conference with a lot of heavy hitters that were chasing a ring. But if anything, now I think it's the opposite. The Baltimore Ravens are not one of the prey of the AFC, they're one of the predators. And after all of this, if you still don't believe that, well, come find me after they eat your team alive. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. And of course, thank you to our season long sponsor for helping to make this show possible in the first place. Obviously talking about our friends over at my bookie. They are back once again this football season with another huge 100% deposit bonus for all film room viewers. If they come check out the site at the link below and use promo code Brett on my bookie, you can bet on really anything sports related you can imagine. And even a lot of stuff that's not sports related too. They even have a bunch of bets you can take on U.S. politics if you're nihilistic enough like me. Impeachment before 2020 elections is sitting at plus 300 right now, by the way. That's pretty spicy. Just saying. But uh, yeah, my bookie is awesome. You can bet on anything, like I said. Maybe if you're thinking about dipping your toe into the waters of sports betting this season and staying away from politics, perhaps making a little $20 bet on the Ravens to win the Super Bowl, which would pay out $400 as of today. It's not a bad odds, to be honest, and pretty good payout for 20 bucks. So come check it out. Again, just click on that link in the description with promo code Brett, grab your double deposit bonus, and start having some fun. As for me, I should be back tomorrow with another detailed picks against the spread breakdown for some game that I haven't decided on looking at yet, uh, but I will do that probably today. And I'll have another probably on Saturday, maybe as late as Monday morning, another film room episode coming out as well. Depends on how quickly I can finish it. And then we've got another film room again coming out on its usual Thursday or Friday slot next week. So lots of stuff coming your way. Stick around because I think you're all going to like it a lot. And until then, later.